What's going on? It's been several months since my installation of this Pioneer AVH 4200NX and I want to do a review of the stereo and share my experiences with it. The stereo has been out for a few years now, but I think it's pretty much still relevant, especially at the current price point. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. A lot of the features that I'm going to be showing you, you're not going to be able to use unless the stereo was installed with a parking brake bypass, which simulates the parking brake being engaged and tricks the unit into letting you use the features. Another thing, make sure that your stereo is using the latest firmware. So right now I'm going to just do a quick check. So as you can see right here, we're on version 1.07. The stereo has already gone through a lot of revisions. So if you get the stereo, this should be the very first step you do after the installation. And you can check on the Pioneer website and then compare it to whatever the stereo says right there. If it's not the latest one, make sure you get it. When installed correctly, even with semi-decent speakers, the stereo has a clean, crisp sound across all music sources. And it pumps out adequate power at 22 watts RMS times 4 for most users. This is far and beyond what a lot of stock head units will pump out from the factory. And you would be surprised to learn that this is actually a resistive screen, not a capacitive like most phones are. Most phones are a capacitive screen and they would require you to use your actual skin for it to work. This is not a capacitive screen. How hard you push it will determine if it works or not, but it's actually quite sensitive. I actually like it for a resistive screen. It actually does the job really, really well. And it even allows you to pinch and a lot of resistive screens don't allow you to pinch. And of course you can use your nails or you can use anything you want to scroll on the screen because it's resistive. It works on pressure, not on the capacitive qualities of your fingers. One thing that I will mention about the screen that I really did not like is that the screen is polarized slightly. So if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, which I always do, the screen will darken a little bit. I find that that really bothers me when I'm backing up and the camera pops up because I really want to have a clear view of what I'm backing into. It doesn't really bother me while I'm driving because it doesn't dim it that much, but just know that the screen will dim a little bit. So you might have to overcompensate in your brightness settings to get it as bright as you want it to be if you're wearing sunglasses. Also, if the sun hits it at certain times of the day, it could really get washed over. So you might not have that issue if your car has tinted windows. I mean, that's kind of normal for just about every stereo, but just know that that happens with this one too. The screen, it allows you to tilt it if you want to tilt it. So I can hit the eject button there and I can tilt it a little bit if I want to. Say I'm taller and I want to angle it just a little bit. Well, you can do that. Also, another neat feature of this unit is the fact that it allows you to detach the faceplate. There's a button down here, and all you have to do is hit that button like that, and the faceplate comes right off. You can put it in its case, and you can store it it's out of sight, out of mind. To put it back is very easy. You just pop it right back, and that's it. The microphone that came with the unit is very cheap, right? It looks very cheap anyhow. You're not going to be blown away by it, but it works great, right? I've never had anyone not being able to hear me. So as long as you install it in a place where you have line of sight to your mouth or very close to it, like I did right here, I just installed it right behind. See right there? So my voice travels easily to the receiver on the microphone and onto the head unit, then you should have absolutely no problems. So one of the things that I like the most about the stereo is the way that it allows you to customize the sound experience in your car. These are all of the settings for audio and there's a few things that are very neat in here. So first thing, right, graphic equalizer, 13 band graphic equalizer, more than enough to tailor the sound to exactly what you want it to sound like. And it has some presets right here. So if you don't want to mess with it, you can use some of these presets, which I find very convenient if you listen to different types of music, because you can come in the car and put in, say, rock and pick whatever preset you like the most for that type of music. And then when you listen to a different type of music, you can pick a different preset. But for those of you who are like me and want to really want to really adjust it to your own particular liking, you can do a custom. Right. And then you can tailor it to exactly what you want it to be exactly to your liking. And if you don't want to do it from scratch, you can select one that sounds close to where you want it to be. Say we'll go to powerful, right? Because that's the one I base mine off of. So go to powerful, fix powerful to your own liking. Then once you do that, once you tweak it, it'll save in custom one. So let's see what else we have here. Of course, it has your basic fade balance and most stereos, even stock head units have this fade balance, but it goes beyond that because it allows you to tweak your speakers individually. So you can tell the car right here, which listening position you prefer. I found that the best 
is by leaving it off and tweaking it to your own liking. So you can do each speaker individually and set the decibel level to your own particular preference. One of the best things about the stereo that I absolutely love is the fact that it has a dedicated subwoofer output. So you don't have to tap into the front channel or the rear channel to install an aftermarket amplifier and sub. In my case, I'm using that sub output. So I can literally go in here if I want to ever turn off the subwoofer or I can leave it on and I can set the crossover on it, right? So let me go to subwoofer, right? For that particular output, I can set a low pass filter to only send low frequencies to the subwoofer instead of the full spectrum. And I can change the phase. So I can go back out of there. And then of course, I can set the decibel level for the subwoofer by itself on this screen right here. So this source level adjuster, really like that because this allows you to match the volume of the source that you're on to FM. So if you see a discrepancy in sound between different sources, you can go in here and match whatever source you're on. So in this case, I have an SD card in there and you can match it so that whenever you switch from FM to SD, it sounds about the same volume level. You could also set crossover cutoffs for your front and rear speakers. And for those, it'll allow you to do a high pass filter. So right there, you could do a high pass filter and only send high frequencies above a certain frequency to the front speakers or the rear speakers. That could be useful if you are tweaking your system. My tweeters in this car are parallel with the front speakers. So if I wanted to put mid woofers in the front doors, I can remove the speakers that are in there now and leave the tweeters, set this high pass filter to on and only send high frequencies to the tweeters and then use a separate amplifier to drive the newly installed speakers. So it's just a way to tailor the system to your liking if you're trying to do a system in your car. The stereo also has an auto equalizer option there. If you install a microphone and plug in a microphone to it, you can have the stereo do uh, measurements inside the car and then set the decibel level to each speaker based on the acoustic properties of your car. I did that and I tried it and when I got in, I just did not like what it came up with at all. So I, you know, basically deleted it and did my own, but the option is there. Those are basically your features for audio. In this menu right here, you can really tweak the system to sound exactly how you want it to sound. So I really like the fact that this stereo plays FLAC files because I like to listen to the premium quality sound of the FLAC files. So I was very upset when I found out that Mixtrax does not support FLAC files. Mixtrax is Pioneer's proprietary built-in application that kind of mixes your music and, and gives it effects or whatnot. So I'll click on it and show you what that looks like. So it'll actually use whatever music you have on your SD card or your thumb drives. All right, so we're in Mixtrax. And if you click right here, it'll actually make playlists. So it'll do that based on the beats per minute of the song. This song right here has 127 beats per minute. It'll analyze every song in there, except of course the FLAC files because it doesn't play FLAC files uh, on mixed tracks. And it'll add it to whichever playlist right here it thinks it belongs in. That brings me into the song analysis. You see right there where it says song analysis complete 62 out of 689. It is painfully slow. I was very upset to find out that this is just, it takes forever. That's not to say that it's not useful while it's analyzing the songs. You can still use mix tracks even while it's analyzing songs. So it's not completely useless, but it does take forever. Just know that the larger your music library, the longer that's going to take. So mix tracks has visual effects that you can activate by hitting these little bubbles right here and the reactive to the tempo of the song. So I'm going to turn it up real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's kind of cool. Also, this right here will cut off the ends of the songs so that this uh, one song can roll right into the next and you never have a gap in song. Like I said, it's kind of neat, but I'm very upset that the song analysis takes so long and I'm very upset that it does not play FLAC files. And because of that, I don't use it very much. So of course this unit plays video files and if you install the micro bypass then you can play those video files when you're driving. Of course they're not for you, they would be for your passengers. So if you have something like music videos you can play those so you can listen to music and your passengers can watch videos. So you hit that button right there, you go to video and it'll find all of the video files 
in your SD card. So in my case right here, I have Michael Jackson videos, music videos. So there they are. And I can play them just like a song and I can skip them and go to the next one. So just an option, just something to keep in mind. And you can go back to the music by doing the same thing. Or you can go to photos, of course. And you can set these photos as your background, your wallpaper, or your splash screen. As far as the SD card goes, the SD card slot is behind the screen right there. And you can see right there it says SDHC. So SDHC are high capacity SD cards that go up to 32 gigabytes. You and I both know that SD cards come in much higher capacities now. So you're probably going to want an SD xc which are extended capacity cards that go up to two terabytes i can tell you that even though the manual says sdhc and the unit itself says sdhc that it does play those extended capacity cards because i have one that plays just fine that's another reason why you should always keep the firmware updated on the unit so one of the absolute must-have features for me when i was shopping for stereo was the ability to use android auto and apple carplay this stereo happens to support both which is great the thing is the stereo has two usb ports in the back two usb connections and one of them will support android auto and the other one supports apple carplay i'm sure there's an engineering reason why that is but it is what it is so what i did is i connected this little adapter right here to the hdmi port in the back so that i have easy access to it and also the usb port that supports android auto and i did that because i have an android phone and i very rarely use apple so the apple connection i just put right here in the glove box because i very rarely use it so whenever somebody who has an apple gets in here and they want to use apple carplay they can just open up the glove box connect it to here and we're in business okay so i want to briefly show you what apple carplay and android auto look like i'll show you carplay first so all i'm doing is plugging in the lightning cable to that usb connector that i showed you in the glove box earlier so that's all i'm doing i'm plugging it in i'll plug in the other end to the iphone and it should come up pretty quickly all right so it comes right up so this is Apple CarPlay right here. So it's super easy to use and very intuitive. So obviously you have your navigation, you have your music sources, and you have your phone. And then you can go back here, and then you can download certain apps for it or whatnot. Um, this is your main screen. If you hit the Pioneer button, it'll take you back to the stereo. And you can hit Apple CarPlay to go back. It's fully functional with voice commands. If you set up your voice command on your steering wheel controller or wherever your uh, voice button might be in your car, then you can just hit it like I'm about to do right now. What movies are playing near me? Here are some movies playing at theaters near you. So I just want to show you how quick that comes up and how intuitive and easy it is to use. Okay, so now I want to show you Android Auto. It's just as easy as CarPlay. I'm using my Galaxy S9 and I'm going to plug it in just like I did the iPhone. And I'm going to put it up here. And the amount of time it takes me to put it up there, Android Auto pops up. So very similar to CarPlay, basic, basically the same functionality. You have your navigation. And as I mentioned earlier, the screen allows you to pinch if you need to pinch. And you can actually get into the settings here and, you know, turn on the satellite if you want and show your satellite. It's very functional. So you can get out of there. You have your phone. Then we have your music sources right there and at any point i can just hit the button in the middle there to go back to pioneer so when you launch android auto it automatically starts playing the music that you have set up through whatever app you have in android auto but you're not confined to that you can always go back to pioneer and select whatever source you want to play music out of so in my case right here i'll hit sd card that way i'm listening to the music in my sd card while still being able to use android auto so it's a pretty neat feature and of course, voice works the same way. I hit the voice button. What movies are playing near me? Some popular movies showing around. So very functional, very easy to use. One of the major reasons why I got this head unit right here. So let me go over some other features of the stereo that are pretty neat. So if we click up here in AV, audio video sources, it gives you all of the sources in the car. 
All the stuff that is grayed out right here is stuff that you don't have currently connected in the car. What's neat about this is right here you have five spots that you can select stuff right here that you're using and drag it up there. That way it's always showing. So say I use rear, right? I can grab it, long press, and just drag it up there and put it up there. That way I don't always have to click AV. I can just select it easily from here. That's why I have my FM and my SD right there and my Pandora because these are things that I use very frequently. It has an HDMI port and if you're like me and you connected it and you have it right there showing in your dash somewhere, you can connect HDMI sources to the stereo and just basically use the stereo as your screen. Sirius XM, if you're interested in it, remember that it requires a separate tuner and a subscription service, so you have to pay for it monthly. The car plays CDs and it plays DVDs and it also plays media files within the CD and the DVD. So you don't have to just use a DVD for, for video. You can also fill up a DVD with MP3s and the car will play them or FLAC files or whatever the case might be. If you're installing this stereo in a car where you wanna have a separate monitor, um, that's what rear is right there. And it allows you to install a monitor somewhere else and use that monitor for whatever source you want as an example if you have an suv right and you install this in your suv and then you put a monitor in the back for the kids then you can use the deck as your dvd player and you can play dvds for the kids in the back while the front you can listen to music which actually reminds me of this the stereo also has a remote control which is great for the back if you decide that you want car features um, before you install the stereo, you can get a Maestro RR unit that'll allow you to basically read a lot of ECU information and showing it engages. I didn't install that because I didn't need it. The stereo has two camera inputs. So it came with a camera, but my car already had a camera. So I actually used the stock camera of the car instead of the camera that came with the stereo. In the future, if I want to install it, I can install it, but just know that there it does support two separate cameras. Let me go back to settings. And if I go here to input output settings, I have a smartphone setup. So I'm gonna click on that, smartphone setup. All right, so here I can tell it what I'm using and it's gonna tell me which functions are available for that particular phone. So in my case, device, I'm not using an iPhone, I'm using others, which is for Android. So, and I'm connecting it via USB 2, right? So it's telling me that I can use Android Auto, I can use an iPod right there in uh, USB 2, I can use Pandora with it. And right there it says app radio mode. I really wanted to try out app radio mode, but I didn't get the cable in time for this video. So app radio mode goes in through your HDMI. So see, when I click on HDMI, that becomes available to me. Just know that app radio mode is included in this particular stereo, but you need to connect it through the HDMI port. So if you hit function right here, it brings you to these little menu items, right? This sound retriever right here, restore some of the lost information from compressed files like mp3s i find that it actually works pretty good i actually like it for a lot of music a lot of uh, lower quality mp3s when you click on that sound retriever it does make it sound better so i think that's a neat feature that's on there but here's a weird thing that i'm not sure why it works the way it works these two little squiggly lines right there that's your random right it's actually tied to the repeat function of the stereo i was wondering why every time i would hit random it would take me out of the folder and it would randomize every song in the thumb drive so i separate my thumb drive into folders that act like playlists so if i'm playing say rock i want all of the songs to randomize within the rock folder and it wasn't doing that it was randomizing the entire thumb drive the reason why i was doing it is because it's tied to the repeat function so if you have the repeat for the entire source then it's going to randomize the entire source if you have the repeat for the folder it's going to randomize the folder so that's the way to do it but within here right you have different folders so you can go from one folder to the next and that's how you can do playlists because the stereo does not do playlists so see so right here these are my folders inside my sd card right so these are all my playlists if i go back here i can skip the folders to the next folder or the next folder you can really customize the stereo so if i go to illumination right here you could change the colors of the leds down here from right there you can see it so that's kind of neat you can change the theme 
color of the stereo you can change the background colors change the clock you can really customize it so you can go to the home screen or the audio video screen if you install the stereo just about every feature that the, the stereo offers is customizable through the menus so if you install say a backup camera and the backup camera it doesn't work more than likely is because the settings are wrong so say for example I go into camera you can pick which cameras are on which cameras are off how the camera senses to turn on how it's getting its power all this stuff is customizable through the menus because every installation is different so don't get frustrated and don't think that something's not working dig through the menus to figure out why because more than likely it's just a setting that's selected wrong I have found that whenever you disconnect the battery, you lose a lot of the settings. So be mindful of that if you spend a lot of time customizing your settings in the stereo and you go and remove the battery, you might lose them. So you might want to either write them down or maybe just take a picture with your phone or something like that. That way you remember exactly where your settings were, the way you like them, and you don't have to figure it all out again. The stereo does not support hubs. If your car came with a hub like my WRX did, the stereo is not going to read it. I was not able to get that to work. Just keep that in mind. You have to do only one. It does not support a USB hub. Another thing that you should keep in mind before you install the stereo is the backup camera and how you install it. Right here, there is an option for camera view. So if I click on camera view, you would expect to see the backup camera, right? If I click on it, I get nothing. The reason why I get nothing is because of the way that I installed it. And I installed it that way on purpose. In my particular car, I had to buy a step down converter to convert the 12 volts from the unit to six volts that the camera accepts. And then I noticed that when it was doing that, that that little converter it was, it's a very small converter. And I noticed it just, it got hot. I figured that if I installed it with the converter being on all the time, I thought that maybe that thing would break eventually because just being hot all the time and on all the time while the car was on. So I decided to just leave it connected to the reverse signal in the car rather to a constantly hot 12 volt source. So just keep that in mind. If you want the ability, say you're towing a trailer or something like that in your particular car and you want the ability to maybe look at the trailer or you just want to have the ability to look in your rear view camera whenever you want, then make sure that you connect it in such a way that it has power all the time so that when you hit that camera view source right there, you actually get a picture. When you install the dimmer cable to the unit, it just tells it when your car goes from day to night, when the sensor up on your dash goes from day to night. So you know how you turn your dimmer and your lights in your car get, you know, dimmer or brighter. The lights in the stereo are not going to do that. It's got two settings. It'll go from day to night. Whenever it's daytime, you set up your picture exactly how you like it and how you can see clearly during the day. And when it turns to night, you do the same thing tonight. And that way, every time it switches, it'll be perfect for you. So in summary, I think this is a fantastic unit for the current price point of this stereo. It is very much still relevant. It has some amazing features. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are amazing features to have in a stereo. Everything else that it does for you and the ability to customize the sound and to easily add components to your system, subwoofers and amplifiers. And you can do that independently of the stereo. And it has all the preamp outputs, as you would expect. The ability to do all that is just great. The sound quality of the stereo sounds fantastic and when you do the installation correctly you will retain a lot of the factory functionality and steering wheel controls you retain you can do the parking brake bypass so you can get access to all of your settings and all of your features even while you're driving not for you for your passengers of course you can retain your backup camera you can even add features that the car didn't have before like gauges by using the maestro rr unit and you can add an extra camera to the car so that's it for this video. If I didn't answer a particular concern or question of yours, be sure to hit me up in the comment section and I will answer it to the best of my ability. I'm very active in the comment section. I do appreciate you watching. I hope you definitely got something out of it and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. If this was useful, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more automotive tutorials, mods, and reviews. Take care.